Am I about to use this whole bottle of wine in this recipe? Yes, because today we're making Tuscan Pepozo, a braised beef dish that calls for a lot of wine. Welcome to Actually Italian. I'm Sal, and on this channel the focus is on authentic recipes so I can help you cook like an Italian too. Most Italian braised meat dishes have a broth, some sofrito, or tomato passata in it. This dish doesn't have any of those things, and there's a really interesting story as to why. The dish was made during the Renaissance, which was before tomatoes had been introduced to Italy. At that time, the dome of the cathedral in Florence was being built. The workmen who were working on that dome were specialists in terracotta. They had ovens and they had terracotta pots. It was simple for them to just throw everything into a pot, put it into the oven, and in a few hours they had a ready-to-eat meal. But that's enough of the history lesson. Let's just jump right into the recipe. The star of the show is beef. Chuck roast, brisket, short ribs, even beef cheek would work fantastic in this recipe. The first thing that we want to do is look for any of the silver skin that's on the meat. That's not going to break down so we need to remove it. So with a sharp knife I just want to get that off of there and then we'll work on cutting it into chunks. As always I have a link to the printable recipe in the description box below. Another important ingredient in this is black pepper which actually gives the name to the dish, peposo. We want to use a lot of pepper and we want it to be fresh. So I'm just going to give it a light crush and keep some of them whole and some of them crushed. Now we want to start searing the meat. So I've got a nice heavy Dutch oven over a medium high heat. And I'm going to do this in stages, just a little bit of meat at a time so that way we don't crowd the pan. We want to get a nice brown on all of these pieces of meat. That's going to create a nice fond on the bottom of the pot. Since we're not using a beef stock in this, that's going to help flavor the sauce. Now that we have the meat nicely browned and set aside, you can see we've got that nice fond on the bottom. We want to deglaze that with the wine. You can use any dry red wine that you like, but traditionally they'll use a Chianti or a Sangiovese. I'll add most of the bottle of wine right now and give a nice scrape to the bottom to dissolve all that. Now we can add all that meat back to the pot and make sure it's all covered with the wine. At this point we can add all the other ingredients. I've got a few cloves of garlic here. Now I left the skin on because I wanted these to stay whole so I could make a garlic paste later. Didn't work out that way. They all dissolved anyway, so you don't need the skin on them. I'll also add the herbs, which is just some sage and some chopped rosemary. Now we'll add all that pepper. Now why do we need all this wine and all this pepper in this dish? Well, back in the day, those workmen couldn't really afford to get the freshest beef. So they get beef that was not quite so fresh, and all that pepper and all that wine was meant to cover up the kind of funky flavor. These days, we have access to nice, fresh meat. We don't need to do it this way anymore, but the recipe hasn't changed because it's just that good. We're going to add just a little bit of salt. It's going to reduce. We don't want to put too much. Then we're going to cover this up and reduce the heat down to low. It's going to cook for two hours with the lid on. I also recommend giving this a check every 30 minutes or so. Just give it a stir, make sure everything's going okay. Now if you like what you've seen so far, I'd love it if you could give this video a like. It's what's really going to help the channel grow. It's been two hours of simmering away on that slow, low flame, and this is what it looks like. That liquid's still a little bit thin and not quite the consistency we're looking for, so this needs to keep cooking. I'm going to take the lid off and we're going to let it go, still on a low heat, for at least another 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I am going to check it every 15 minutes though to make sure that it isn't getting too dry. And this is the result after 45 minutes. As you can see, the liquid reduced nicely and it's almost like a syrup consistency. So at this point, we're all set. We can turn it off, add a little bit of salt if it needs it, and we're ready to serve it up. Take a look at what almost three hours of cooking in that wine has produced. The meat is super tender, it's just flaking apart, and it just will melt in your mouth. When it comes to serving this up, you've got a lot of choices. You can serve it over polenta, some risotto, mashed potatoes would be great. The traditional way that they originally did it, and the way they still do it in Tuscany now, 
is they would shred the beef up and put it on a piece of grilled bread. And they would serve that with a side of beans and you had a nice meal. The flavors in this dish are really bold. The thing that jumps out immediately is that black pepper. Now all the alcohol, the wine is evaporated out, but you're left with that acidity that really cuts through the rich and meaty flavor of the beef.